light to the Gentiles, that my name shall be known among all the peoples. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome in this season of Epiphany to our service for Holy Eucharist. This is a season of light, and so uh, we see the days getting longer, and we share the light of Jesus Christ with each other and out beyond these doors. So welcome. Great to have you here. Let us open with our sentences. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, you should have a blue pew card. We're going to sing Arise, Shine. Maybe our extra sure has a blue of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved Son, and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made, and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from Acts 8. When the apostles at Jerusalem heard that the samurai had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as they yet, 
for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I have a question for all of you, and I would like to see responses by raised hands, if I may. How many people here remember their baptism? Oh, a couple. Okay, okay. Excellent, excellent. I, I assume it was only two or three hands, uh, because most of you, like myself, um, were baptized as infants. Your parents, your godparents, uh, made this promise for you when you were very young still. Now, a second question. I expect to see a few more hands. How many of you remember your confirmation? Yeah, that's what I thought. Confirmation is our opportunity as Christians to, make, uh, to take those promises that were made for us at our baptism and make them for ourselves, proclaim them for ourselves. And, and we do that in the Anglican tradition and in many traditions um, when we are older. And in our tradition especially, that's always been reserved for, for people at least age sort of 12, 13. And we, um, now, now that... We have a lot more adult baptisms happening. We have a lot more adult confirmations happening, which is really, for me, it's exciting to see so many adults wanting to take that kind of ownership of their faith. But these, these two rites, baptism with water and confirmation, which has always been associated with the Holy Spirit, are really two parts of one larger Christian initiation. In fact, historically, they were the same thing. They happened at the same time in the same service. And I won't go into why we, why we split them up, but it's an interesting story if anyone would like to talk about it later. But really what I want to focus in on today is what, what baptism means and what it tells us about our relationship with God. So all four Gospels talk about Jesus' baptism. That's just how central it is to the life and story of Jesus' ministry. And we, we often say as Christians that when we are baptized, we are baptized into the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we're raised to a new kind of life. We get to, we get to start our new lives as Christians. And one of the exciting things that happens in all of the Gospels, but it's really pronounced in Luke's Gospel, is after Jesus is baptized, you hear the voice of God from the heavens. The he heavens split open. It's quite dramatic. And the Holy Spirit descends onto Jesus looking like a dove. And the voice of God says, You are my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. 
which is a really fancy way of saying, you are my child and I love you dearly. And so if we are baptized into the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, which is what our baptismal promise is, then that statement from God, you are my child who I love dearly, applies to us just as much as it applies to Jesus. We are made children of God through our baptism and confirmation, through all those things that initiate us into the life of the church. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm feeling like something is maybe a bit of a challenge for me, this, this event, this baptism of Jesus, and this statement from God, you are my child and I love you, gets me through quite a bit. So I throw it back to you. Whenever you are feeling like you are challenged by something that you can't handle on your own, remember that you are a child of God and that God loves you dearly. The other interesting thing about Luke's version of the baptism is that we encounter Jesus as an adult for the first time and in the first moment in his ministry in prayer. Luke's Jesus is always praying. Whenever, whenever anything is about to happen, he is in prayer contemplating how to move forward. And I think that's a great, great model for us. Prayer is a practice. None of us get it perfect all the time, but that's why we keep doing it over and over again so that it becomes a little less difficult every time we do it. So, when you're feeling overcome by some event, something you're planning, some test you've got coming up. I just wrote a whole bunch of tests last week, and let me tell you, I prayed a lot during those. <laughs> just take that moment, take a, just a minute to center yourself in prayer, to ask for God to send the Holy Spirit on you, and to remember that you are a child of God through your baptism, and that with you, God is well pleased, and God loves you all dearly. Amen. I invite everyone to stand and affirm their faith. Words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen in us. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she has worshipped and glorified. She has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life. Uh, prayers of the people found in the, the booklet given to you. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Grant us your salvation. Close your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only you can be safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. 
We pray for those who have died. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving power among all nations. We pray for those in need, especially Marge and Harvey Gray, Larry W., Claudia Green, Fanny, Suzanne, Sandy and Bruce, Olga, Janet, Dorothy, Jan, uh, Jude Ree, Kemper Rice, Claudia, Sean Sullivan, Lloyd Beru, and others you now name silently or aloud. Let not the lady, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Merciful and loving God, we ask that by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, through our baptisms, we might be enlightened and strengthened for your service through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the same Spirit ever, one God, world without end. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor on page 360. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Please be seated. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Trinity Church today. Please be seated. We have wonderful to have our children and youth leading us this morning in worship. Thank you, Rob, for organizing that. Uh, we have two announcements that we just wanted to highlight in your leaflet. Uh, so if you take a look at that insert, which you'll see that we have a special forum today. If you want to grab a cup of coffee after uh, the service and come to the library, we're going to have John Kreitler um, present to us 
you know, what, it, what is our budget all about? He's the chair of our finance committee. And this is kind of as a precursor to our annual meeting, which is on the 27th. So if you have questions about how Trinity spends uh, its budget and how, you know, anything about our investments, uh, what else would you say? Uh, just come and, and learn and bring your questions to the library at 11.15, uh, right after the service. Thank you, John. Um, on the 27th is our annual meeting, where we'll just have one service here in the church at 9 a.m., followed by the annual meeting in the parish hall. So um, there will be issued an annual report, and there will be lots of reports from all the committees in the church, uh, the different guilds, and you can read about what's going on. And think about maybe what you'd like to be involved with at Trinity, if you'd like to connect more deeply. Um, also, tonight, we're, we have our new service that we just started this month uh, with this season of light. It's called Trinity at Twilight, or Twilight at Trinity, either way. Six o'clock in the chapel, just 20 to 30 minutes of quiet reflection and evening prayers, and some silence built in, in candlelight. So it's really lovely. Come, come and join us. Um, and, and Terry has been offering us uh, this month uh, Christian yoga. Um, on Fridays. Thank you so much, Terry. Uh, Fridays in the Parish Hall, if you'd like to come and, and be part of that on Friday morning. And Cecily Stranahan offering meditation on Sunday afternoons this month uh, from 4 to 5 at the Congregational Church. And Women at the Well meets tomorrow night, so all women of the parish are invited. That'll be in the library. We're talking about forgiveness, um, especially as taught by Desmond Tutu, a former Archbishop of South Africa. Um, youth groups uh, got a couple announcements? Yeah. Uh, I want to draw your attention just to a couple of things that are happening with the uh, youth groups in the coming weeks. We have our annual ski trip coming up that's open to anyone, any students in grades 6 through 12 and their parents. We, uh, we need uh, lots of help with transportation, so if, uh, if you think you might be able to help us out there, please let me know. Thank you to the Craigs for um, for sharing, opening their home to us so that we can stay up there for free um, while we enjoy skiing. It makes a huge difference, so thank you. And then this summer, from June 25th to 30th, uh, is our mission trip to the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota. And that's going to be open to students in grades 8 through 12, and any adults as well who would like to participate in that. It's a, a wonderful event, and we're partnering this year with Christ and Holy Trinity in Westport and St. Paul's in Fairfield. So we'll, we'll all have people going uh, at the same time. So if you have any questions about either of those or any of our other uh, programs for youth and children here at Trinity, feel free to grab me in the coffee hour or shoot me a message later on. Thank you. So I wanted to let you know we're going to have a special recital here in memory of Chris Fries, uh, Ted Fries's wife, um, who passed away last year. And, or a year and a half ago. Uh, that'll be Saturday, January 26th, so the day before the annual meeting uh, here in the church at 4 p.m. with a wonderful uh, uh, organist, Dr. Balint Karosi, who's uh, from Manhattan, from the Lutheran Church, St. Peter's Lutheran Church, which is right at the City Court building, if you've ever worshiped there. So a wonderful musician uh, in, in memory of our dear Chris, who was the leader of our flower guild. And so the offerings will go towards the Flower Guild that, for that service, for that concert. So, any other announcements that I'm missing? Okay. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts with praise.
receive communion uh, in two lines coming forward, uh, the bread and the wine, and then go back to your pews. So I hope that will be clear. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, as in the mystery of the word made flesh, you've caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Take them in reverse. 
remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who loves us, who made us, who travels with us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.